It's time for my fix it up life marked. You got your tool groove on. Did you bring your tools upstairs? Because we're talking about tool mark today. Did you bring them? I did what not bring I my tool pouch. My only tool I brought today was a, a mug of coffee. Hammer. Now, straight claw hammer. Yes. Big difference. I could go into a whole thing on this. What I'm about the waffle face or no waffle no. face? It's time for my fix it up life marked. You got your tool groove on. Did you bring your tools upstairs? Because we're talking about tool porn today. Did you bring them? I did not That's bring all I have in my tool pouch. My only tool I brought today was a, a mug of coffee. Hammer. Now, straight claw hammer. Yes. Big difference. I could go into a whole thing on this. What I'm, about the waffle face or no waffle no face? Waffle. No Unless waffle. You just frame houses. You know, you don't need a waffle face. That's a waste of time. Unless you're at the waffle house and you get your face all up in some all waffles, then that's the time to have a waffle that face. Is. And something else I always keep in my tool pouch. It's been years. Always keep this in here. Can we see it past the okay. holding up my hide painters multi-tool? It's probably like every single job. This one still has a label on it because I misplaced one. Well, that's nice that you keep the label yeah, on it. A, it's actually kind of a really good tip. Do you know that people take the the screen protector off of their phone? When you take it off of your phone from the factory, that's actually the best screen protector you could ever have on your phone because that was put on in the factory. Oh, right. So you want to cut around it and then put your put it in a case so that you don't take it off to then expose it to all the dirt and stuff and Makes scratches. Makes sense to me. That's a little tip for me to you. And we're talking tool porn today. Trish is talking tech. I'm pretty psyched and excited to have our guest on today, David Shinecoff, because he was on Ellen's Design Challenge. 
He is one of the original guys from, it's like a club of design on the dimers. You know, Tanya Nayak and, and all of those guys all sort of started off in that show. So many talented people. So we're going to get to talk to him about what's in his tool pouch. That is going to be fun. He's coming to us from on set as well. Yeah. So maybe we'll get to see some cool stuff. But in the meantime, we got to take a break. We'll be right back. In my fix it up life with my husband. And you have to sing back to me, Mark. My husband. If I were a carpenter. Oh, Lord. And you were a lady. Please save me. Would you marry me anyway? I Who would. knows? And I had your baby. Sang that song. Oh. Yeah. That's our little song. It is yeah. our song. Our baby now is six and a half years old, though. He's not much of a baby anymore. <laughs> and he's been training for Easter. I don't care about that. I do care about it because it has to do something with what we're talking today, which is tool porn, but not our son because that doesn't really make <laughs> no, any sense. You know, that but segue does not make any sense. He's a mini he's a mini builder. He's gotten his hands on those like candy Legos and he's been building like the space shuttle and stuff around the house, but like an Easter egg style, so they're hidden. So I keep coming upon these like little candy building treats and our guest today david shinkoff has a little one too i do i do my little son deacon yeah deacon is awesome he some name thank you thank that you that is a boss name i want to hang james. out with him deacon james yep he's either going to be a builder or he's going to be a pro wrestler <laughs> wait 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 deacon james so he's dj shinkoff yep D D djs yes Nicely done. That's awesome. That's really <laughs> yeah, good. I didn't even think about that. And ladies and gentlemen, DJ Shinegoff hitting the stage in the middle arena. He is totally hitting the stage. He is <laughs> shining like a superstar. Is he one yet? Uh, he'll be one next week. Actually, the day before uh, uh, St. Patrick's Day. Really? Nicely He's done. one year old Nicely baby. Done. So how do you say the Michael, whatever that guy's name is, let's get ready to rumble, but in baby talk? <laughs> I'm wow. not asking you to do it. I'm just saying <laughs> that that was my next thought after the in the center arena. How do you do that? Like I can't. I'm like in my brain trying to figure out how to even get it. Let's get ready to rumble. Okay, now someone else do baby. In baby talk. talk. Let's get ready to rumble. Oh, Dave's pretty pretty cool. <laughs> Now you are a talented man Thank you and, very much. and you come from like the league of designers and carpenters from the, is it the design on the dime? Yep. I come from the original HGTV crowd of the design on a dime crowd. So I did that show for about five years as a co-host and designer and builder. And I kind of launched that into a private career of designing and building. I'm a general contractor. And um, I work with Rigid Tools doing, you know, uh, introduction videos and talking about toolage and stuff like that. Now, I know you're more excited about it than your voice is lending to. Because if you check out David's Twitter feed, it's like, I'm building tool, building with tools today. It's a great day, everybody, because I get to build stuff. Lots of exclamation points. Yeah, exactly. So like yeah. I see that in the morning. I'm like, oh, he's excited again today about tools. <laughs> so we wanted to talk tool porn today, which is, you know, like all the jealousies and everything that people have about tools and workshops. And, you know, people have some serious tool envy out there. Without there a doubt. It's funny because I think that, you know, there's such a crowd because, um, because of the big box stores and and um, and companies like Rigid coming out with tools that are more accessible to everyday people, you don't have to be you know this major carpenter or builder to learn how to use these tools. They put them in the price points when people can actually access them and, and have them within their own realm and, and have them in their in their toolbox. Um, so to me, it makes people it makes the tool envy something that's almost a thing of the past. Now people have this like, well, I just want to learn how to use it and build stuff, which I love because for me and for you guys, it's great because we can just talk about tools all day long. So like when you were on Ellen's design challenge and you walked wow. into that shop and you were with all those other guys that have yeah. done all those other TV shows for, yeah. for scripts, HGTV, DIY network shows, uh -huh. 
did you guys all kind of like hold hands and start sobbing <laughs> because how amazing that place was? It was pretty, I mean, you know, it was pretty heavy. I mean, it was, it was, uh, it was, it was, there was, for the most part, every tool that we needed was at our fingertips for the most part, you know, um, building things. I mean, you know, every, and, and I'm a, I'm a fairly competent builder. You know, I've been doing it for a long time, but you know, you still get kind of like, well, what are they going to throw at me? You know, what's the designer going to throw at me? What's the hook going to be? So you get a little intimidated. You know, we all did. We we're all kind of like looking at each other like, okay, so you're pretty good. And, you know, Chip, you're good. And, you know, you know, Chip, Chip Wade I was working with, he's like an engineer and a builder. Um, but, you know, I've also got a lot of years under my belt of building. So I, I always feel pretty confident in the arena with other guys like myself. Uh, but it was, it was pretty breathtaking. You know, when you when you walk into that studio with six wait, shots. Wait, 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 Mark. So under his belt, you've got like seven belts hanging behind you right now. Now I'm curious. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in my dressing room right now. <laughs> Speaking of belts, Dan. Yeah. Uh, you have a lot many, of belts. How many do you have? Speaking of beating your wife with a belt, Mark. <laughs> um, uh, no, I, I only wear one belt and I uh, don't beat my wife with it. I wear um, 10 belts at a time. Yeah, so in my ten, closet, ten it looks belts. just like yours. Yes. Exactly. exactly. But, well, you know, it's, like, it, it's, it's funny because people, you know, it, when you go into a situation like that, you, I, I mean, I have a shop, and I, I like my shop a lot, but my shop is nothing like that shop, you know. So who's it? it's a shop that's going to be outfitted with a lot more toolage, so I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Now, now uh, you sound to me like, and tell me if I'm wrong, but a lot of contractors are more business guys. And a lot of contractors are carpenters who need to run a business because that's, you know, you got to put food on the table. They like building stuff, getting out in the field and are less comfortable, say, with the spreadsheets and the critical path and all that stuff. So are you more on the carpenter side of that? That's I'm definitely, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a decent business person. I'm definitely on the creative side. I mean, I'm at the point now in my career, if it's not fun, I'm not doing it. If I get into a situation where I'm with a client and, 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 you know, two days into, you know, conversations and meeting, I feel something weird. It's generally, I walk away, you know, and it's, it's not because of anything more than my years in the business to my age. You know, if, if it, if it, if it quacks like a duck and it walks like a duck, generally you're going to get an egg. So I'm trying to figure out ways to still keep people, you know, in the path, but try to keep myself from, you know, going nuts sure. because, you know, I'm not, I, I, as, as builders, we try not to take people's problems on as our own. And I'm not, you know, and a lot of what I do is handholding and, you know, dealing with the business aspect of it and dealing with people's problems. And I've got to be very careful in my own realm, not to delve into that too deeply, not to get too close because, you know, you're with somebody for six months, you're there every day. I'm there mostly calling the ball and making sure that things happen in the right pattern and in the right way, making sure my vendors are there when they need to be, making sure the project is going along as it should. And that's my job. So I have a lot of standing around, looking through my sheets, talking on phones, and the client will, you know, of course, come up and be like, you know, you want a cup of coffee or, you know, I'm like, sure. And then, you know, needless to say, they start talking and, you know, it's like problems, you know, and they're like, okay, well, yeah. You know. I bill extra for psychotherapy. Yeah, exactly, yeah. though. But it's so funny, Mark. Like, that's the truth. Like, it is. It's psychotherapy. You know, building is psychotherapy. It, it's, it, it really, it's because it, it's so personal to everyone, though, you know, and they feel like you're already all the way into their life, so you might as well just be all the way into their life. And it's like, yeah. 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 Well, and they're, and they're, you know, and, and it's in their project, of course, is the most important thing in the world to them. And it, it's important to me because I, at the end of the day, if my client is not happy, I have not done my job. And that's how I look at every job that I do, whether it's furniture, whether it's sets, whether I'm doing voiceover, whatever I do, I just always want my client to be happy. I want them to walk away saying, you know what? I want him back twice next month and 14 days until next Sunday. So to me, that's, that's what really makes me feel like I've done my job. Okay, I've can got, we start talking about tools? We can, but I've got I got a, an out for you for the if it quacks like a duck and it walks like a duck. Oh, just use that okay. baby voice. Yeah. That would get get, yeah. get yeah. them moving along. Do, do the Michael Buffer. That's a guy's name. Michael Buffer. Get ready yeah. to rumble. You could do this in that voice and it would be fine. Uh, yeah. ma'am, that will be ten million dollars. <laughs> 
goes right, goes wrong, who cares? Uh, who okay. cares? You have $10 million. Uh, <laughs> you have like the, the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory contract where it's like that really tiny print. Oh, that and scene the, is hilarious. That, oh my gosh. Do you remember the that original scene movie? The end of the of movie? Of course I remember it. I just saw it the other day. I watch it all the time with my boy. He loves it. Oh my goodness. What I'm laughing Dying. too hard to even know what he says. <laughs> okay, let's talk about tools. All right. No, let's I'm... talk about Willy Wonka. No, really. <laughs> right. We can watch that we, later. We could segue. I've been before... trying to get you to see that multiplicity movie for years now. And it is actually oh, the guy's a builder in that movie, Michael Keaton. Yeah, does he actually build anything though? Is and the like copy a of a show, copy. Like, walking around on a job site that's it, Birdman. It How about Birdman? Birdman! Tara! <laughs> no. We talk about Birdman a lot. Mark. All right, let's talk. Let's, talk, okay. let's go right into Okay. Tool. So, Tool Pouch, do you have um, a, what, the Tool Apron? Oh, yeah. Tool you Pouch? Have, I, do, I do like wearing an apron um, when I'm working uh, just because that way I don't lose my pencil. That's actually really smart. Now, the apron meaning like the apron that goes over your, like, I don't know, you wear it like a shirt, I guess. Yeah, no, 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 no. Not like, no, that's a smock. That's a, a smock. <laughs> that's a smock. That's like a lab coat. Yeah, it's like a you lab want, coat. No, no, I wear the guys on... more like a, a tool apron, which is like a little bib. It's got um, a pouch in front of it, and it, it straps over my shoulders, and it's got a little, a little spot right here for my pencil and for. Uh... Yeah, we're talking about the same thing. Yeah. and yeah, a yeah. picture of your of your family. I I wear right an here, apron right from the kitchen with flowers and stuff on it. Do you really? Yeah, yeah. I feel oh, like you know. Awesome. I do, you're... but you know, Teresa, the picture of my family is right here in my heart. Oh, it's always with me. It's always with me. Uh, David Shine. David's a nice boy. I, I actually have to leave now. Oh, gonna, do you? Yeah. Yeah, he yeah, does. He can't to, be near just emotion. Too cool. oh, it's just not, not, he's he's not allergic emotion. to too much emotion. <laughs> okay, so what? Oh, the, what do you always ask? Is the uh, impact driver or drill? Oh yeah, the my fix it up life tool lightning round. Oh yeah, ding 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 ding. Which I make up as I go. Mm -hmm. Okay. But, all right, let's play. Um, they're all correct answers to these. They're mine based on my life experience, but I then overlay them to yours. Got it, got it. So you can't win. Okay, <laughs> perfect. perfect. Everyone no. is a loser in this game except Mark. Well, it's great because, you know, as, as you know, as a married man, we never win anyway, so it doesn't really matter. That's it. Exactly. So in his so, made-up fantasy game of tools, he always wins there. Much like the drainage in any bathroom, it rolls downhill. Okay. So here we go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Impact driver or cordless drill? Impact driver. Correct. Thank you. I'm very excited. Okay. Worm driver, sidewinder. Worm drive. Also correct. East Coast, that's an East Coast, West Coast thing, by the way. It totally it is. is, except you totally like the the um, worm drive. I'm and a he's on the East convert. Coast, but yeah, 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 we call, yeah, the, yeah. I call it a worm drive. Yes, yeah. total convert. To it's that the drop those drop cuts because you can't really do that with a side. Can you do that with a sidewinder? It's like cumbersome. I used, those are for like table, like kind I of. I used to when I had one a long time ago. I realized that I, I'm not picking all this. I'm not picking up an entire deck, putting it on. A, sawhorse table then cutting it then putting it in i'm just going to cut it off the pile yeah yep. that was totally before i had a worm drive and well, that's what the worm drive that sounds at. like a now, really now, good exercise my, though. my question guardless or guarded oh my god <laughs> <laughs> just if you want to see david my skin crawl oh my god i can't i just I've heard guys tell stories of saws hitting, going down on the deck, yep. blades still spinning, yep. Yep. and they just run backwards, and they'll well, run right over I, your toe. I've got framers that I hire, you know, salty dogs, guys that are running around with shorts on that, that are way too short, and they're like, they're they're on on the on the job site, and they literally they have no guard on their on their no. saws on their on their uh, worm drive, and they're throwing it around like it's a toy. Yes. And but I have never seen quicker, better cuts from anybody than 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 these than these superior framers that have been doing it for twenty five years. But it scares the life out of me because they're on my job site and they're on my workman's comp. So, yeah. Ooh, the second part. Yeah. <laughs> let me let me oh, let me before you go to oh my god, fashion fashion question. Okay. Okay. 
fashion question. Okay, so I was having a, a Twitter conversation recently that, with that in itself is thrilling. But I, I think it that it's better. I think that um, like Chris Grundy from Cool Tools and Matt Blashaw, Matt Minster, a bunch of guys were all we're all tweeting about this. Is there a place for skinny jeans on the job site? No. <laughs> The gasping you hear is me spitting out my coffee. <laughs> because <laughs> Grundy, who also, he, he hosts Blog Chris, Habit, too. Chris he says Grundy, Chris Grundy should not be in skinny jeans. Oh, he says the tighter, the better. Yes, oh, he does. Lord. So I, mean, I think everybody should. younger than me, so I can't really say a whole lot. So everyone needs to be tuning into Blog Cabin this next round, because if he's wearing them skinny jeans, uh, that's, that's something. <laughs> Okay, so get back to tools. You're, you're, you're wearing leather. I mean, granted, you're smoking, so I get it. But, yeah, like, see? you're a builder, and you're wearing leather. So, you know, it all – I guess it all works, you know? You know, I have been seen on a job site wearing a dress – and well, with boots. But still, <laughs> I – why can't you wear a skirt? Why can't you wear a skirt on a job site? Skinny jeans, though, are tough because – we yeah. had a, a you can't I'll you can it. bend down in, in we, a we had a we had a PA on one of the TV shows we worked on, who mm -hmm. a production assistant is what they call them. This yeah. guy's jeans were so tight, like if he had a credit card in his pocket, you could have read the number. So you could so you could under so you could kind of translate that. Yeah, there and I read this somewhere. I'm totally stealing this from some Facebook thing. I'm but, actually going to go buy some clothes right now online yeah. using that credit card number. The groups of people who should not wear skinny jeans include colon men and carpenters. <laughs> yeah, that was it. You know, I think our That's 6 year old funny. could rock some skinny jeans. I think he would look super cute. So there's something about like a, like at that age that they have the cutest little bottoms. Your your son when he gets to be around four or five years old, it's like the cutest little butts those little boys have. He's got the littlest tushy I've ever seen in my life. I mean, it's like it's like literally like that big. Yes. Yeah, yes. adorable. But once they get a little bit older, you can't. I I, I probably get arrested for saying. Yeah, that. yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. My wife sends me pictures of him like running around his bedroom, like you know, he he he's learning to walk right now. So he, he uses everything. So he pushes the, like right now he pushes the little hamper, the little, you know, the hamper you take down the laundry room. He pushes it around like a little walker, completely naked. And he's like walking in the bathroom and he uses it like a little walker. It's crazy. It's so That's much fun. Awesome. That is, is yeah. so good. Is he still in diapers or is he doing what I call spot peeing? Oh, no, no, no. It's funny though. Like he will, like when he's not in the diaper, he will just pee wherever he is. But he is definitely still in diapers and we prefer to use cloth. Yeah. We did cloth Try diapers it. for two years. Yeah, was it? it was brutal. Yeah, it's awesome. Well, I loved we it. Service. We have a service, so it's easier. We yeah. had a service too. The okay. they the people came from Lancaster, and so like they drove all the way out to Philadelphia with these diapers and open up the bag with the clean diapers. Oh. And there's nothing that has smelled so clean yes. in my entire life as a bag full of clean diapers right, right. from Lancaster. Pennsylvania. I will I will take that back. Mm, they were pretty mm -hmm. good, but what I remember so unfondly has cast a, a pall over the whole thing, which was do you have those little rubber like ace bandage clips that clip the thing together? Oh, no, no, no. Ours ours were actually they're actually they're made of terry cloth and they have snaps on them. Oh, so we didn't I have had the I had the grabber clips for the first one. I had the little but these are much fancier now. So they, they literally just, you just have to snap them into place and you're done. And then you put the cover over it. Oh, yeah. We had a thing. In the beginning, yeah, we had it, safety pins. I mean, you couldn't drill a hole through these diapers with an 18-volt drill. I mean, <laughs> I'm sitting like, go, go, ow. And then, no, no, don't wake up. Don't wake up. Don't go to sleep. Oh, my God. I'm so tired. It's 2 in the morning. Ow, again. Ow, again. It was that kind of experience. So Could you guys, could you guys talk about yourselves for two minutes? What's that? Can you talk amongst yourselves for two seconds? Yeah, we yeah. totally can. Like we'll that. talk about you. Yeah. So yeah. that David guy, I don't know about him at all. He's got 14 belts in his dressing room. Well, you know what? This is actually a good time for us to share some love for the people who make this podcast and oh, this hangout possible. This radio show. This radio show, yes. which is Sherline. They make some awesome paint accessories you're getting very brushes. like very gentle right now like mr rogers I'm in the middle you know the coolest thing that they make though you have to go online and check it out is that pour the pour spout thing that you put over your paint can and you pour it yes. out and it doesn't and then you can store it 
Yes, it solves that I think that it's called problem. the Corin store. It solves the problem of when you replace the paint can lid on the paint can. Yeah. That it the dried paint and all that stuff doesn't doesn't make it so it can't close. It seals it so that when you want to do some touch up later or whatever. But the best the part though out. though is that it pours it out beautifully. I think we need to do like a test of like off a second story or something with that. That <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? So I'll pour and yeah. then you you try to get the paint in like um a shot glass. Yes. That would be awesome. I think we should totally rock that video. <laughs> Coming soon to a YouTube channel near you. And David is back. Thank David you is for back. Coming back, David Sheinkoff. Who? Thank you so much. We're Thank glad you tracker, didn't run away. No, 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 no. I would never run away. So I have design challenge. I have to ask two really big questions because sure. I sent out a tweet, and Kaylee McCabe, who hosts Rescue Renovations, and she's yes. also winner of Stud Finder, she says that her tool porn fantasy would be to have a CNC machine. Now, is that something that would be in your fantasy shop? I, I like, I think CNC she, machines are great for making jigs because that way, if I want to, if I want to have any, a router follow a pattern, I can do it myself. I mean, I think, I don't think CNCs are cheating. I think it's great for doing mass production stuff, but I think in a small shop, it takes away the personality of the builder. Um, but like I said, I think it's great for making jigs and stuff like that. But to me, I, I'm, I'm really good with a router and I can even, I'm good with a jigsaw so I can, you know, make my own jigs. But, you know, a CNC would definitely help for situations like that. What about 3D printing? Uh, 3D printing is fascinating. Um, at, um, I work with uh, Rigid Power Tools and I'm currently in, uh, in Anderson, South Carolina at their headquarters doing, um, doing a uh, tool porn, um, doing videos and all that kind of stuff. And we're talking about stuff for Father's Day and the new releases that they have coming out, the Gen X5. Um, and it, it, it's the guys that are in the, the, um, the product development and the research and development stuff, they have 3D printers here that blow my mind because it was the first time I'd, saw, I'd, I'd seen one that actually can produce things in different strengths of plastic so like a trigger could actually move. Right. It's not necessarily on a pivot point, but it can actually move. So you can actually feel the way that it's shaped and that it works. I mean, it's incredible. The three, I, I do love 3D printing. I think it's definitely a future. That is absolutely fascinating. I, you know, when I heard that they're selling them at Staples, 3D printers. They're not selling that 3D printer. They're not printer selling that, that exact one because that would be probably a little pricey for Staples. Yeah. And complicated. You get $10 off. It only costs $9 million. No, but I'm reading a book right now, the innovation book that you gave me for a present, hon, and talking about when they were developing computers and that whole race to figure out and that they could – you know, do the work of what it would take people to do, like, you know, actually write out math problems and do them all day long, and they'd pay them like 50 cents an hour. It would like take them, then they invented a machine that it could do the work of like 20 guys for five weeks in one week. And like, it was just like one problem. But now we're like talking about printing things like in your house, like 3D. The, the leap from having oh, to write everything out to figure crazy. it to then going to a place where you can like do a program to to print like a mug or a tool or well, how, how earrings this? or something blows my mind. It actually, uh, they're actually working with 3D food now. I so, heard that I've somewhere. Read that yeah, I saw, I read an interview about it, uh, uh, an article about it. It was unbelievable. I mean, they, they literally, I mean, I think it's going to be a while before we get that down but i mean that's the jetsons right there yeah you know? that totally makes me think of the jetsons i want to be like them where the day when you can drive your car somewhere <laughs> and then you can like then push a button and it's your briefcase yeah yeah that that would be just like well George. i mean look, look driving cars are now a thing of the of the future but they're already here i mean car there are cars that drive themselves you know there's a car <sighs> like a mercedes driving itself around san francisco i saw mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, well, then there's the Roomba that vacuums your house, right? Am, right, am I right? <laughs> Back to tool porn. <laughs> oh, I think okay. we only have about a minute or so left, though. Okay. So what 
So in that minute or so left, name like the five things that you have to have in your tool pouch every single time you step foot on a job site like today at Rigid. Tape measure, pencil, angle finder, stud finder, impact gun. Ooh. Very nice. That's a really good list. Very well, nice. I mean, it's pretty, a pretty complete list, you know? Those are the things I have to have as a builder when I'm, when I'm walking around. It gets you there. You can yep. take off a switch plate or drive a deck screw or measure. Well, yeah, I mean, is. you know, and I, I got to have my rigid tools. Yeah. You do. <laughs> and yeah. you can also use the tape measure. You can extend it to put it right at the end of the nose of your subcontractor so you can then scream at him. <laughs> Wrong tile. You know, I for do. For example, just for example. It, it, in the, just a little bit of time that we have left, I want to share my little tip, which is I stick a lot of stuff in my boot. Okay, that's not a real... It's an extra tool pouch. So, like, you have a tool apron, but if you wore skinny jeans, you <laughs> could... <laughs> what do you got? What do you hey, got? I got boots on, too. <laughs> Might have a nice blue thing going on. It's a little, a little Vanna. A little Vanna. What are those red wings or something? <laughs> yeah, those are red wings. I got... Ow. <laughs> Mark needs to do more yoga. I got, I got a... Hold on. Stay, stay with me. I got oh a, man, those are some caterpillars. They're yeah. Ariat. Ariat. Yeah. Ariat. Oh my god. But you know, my favorite boot of all time though is the my equestrian boots that we have that I got from was it the original muck boot company? Those things have oh, kept yeah, my feet yeah. warm and toasty and dry and blizzards and all kinds of stuff. Cause my thought process is if you can design a boot for people to wear around horse poo and muck. That's the boot that will like serve me well in any kind of inclement situation. Well, and, I, and on that note, <laughs> and I, now I think that we have to talk, say goodbye. Talking about that, I'm gonna say I gotta, we have I gotta to jump get back going. on set. But um, I wanted to say thank you so much for having me on your show. I'm a big fan of both of yours, and I, it, this was such an opportunity to be with you. And I'd love to talk to you guys again whenever you have a chance. And uh, you guys are dynamite. You're such a great presence, and you're so so fun to be with. Awesome, David. Wow. Likewise, David. Thank likewise, you. we Super enjoy watching back. everything, and I'm looking for those tweets. Good morning. It's time to make something with rigid tools. Hey, thank you so much, Teresa. <laughs> thank you very much, Mark. You guys have a great day, okay? And and I hope that snow doesn't last too much longer. But you guys are beautiful people. Thank you. Oh, thanks. Buddy. Thank we'll you. See ya. Okay, take care, guys. Bye -bye. So, Mark. That was a great interview. And I that's the end of our time. show. So I guess we're going to have to tell everybody to come and stop by myfixituplife.com and check out all the cool projects that we're doing with Hide Tools and Shareline and Western Red Cedar and all kinds of awesome, cool stuff. Lots in the pipeline. Lots coming up. Stay with us. We're and, glad you were here today. we got to go. Come back that's again. It. More My Fix It Up Life. Woo!